Hey guys, what's up? Uh, happy to tell you that today's video has a sponsor, and that sponsor is actually Grubhub. Oh, per, uh, perfect timing. I got your uh, bacon cheddar broccolini bites. Uh, Grubhub is a fast and easy way to order your food what? online. Yeah, I know that. I'm here three times a week. And, Who are you talking to? And Grubhub also recommends cool local places that you may not even know deliver. You know we deliver. This is my third time here this week. Come on in. I don't, is this like a YouTube? Ordering from Grubhub is one of the easiest things you could possibly do. Who are you talking to? And before you know it, your food is hot and ready at your door, ready for you to eat in the comfort of your own home. Is this like a social experiment? I really... I gotta get going, man. Okay, well. You can download the app or do it online if you want. I'll see you next week. And it's so good. You know, 99% of what you need to be a good comedian is a unique perspective. I'm not sure if that's a true, but I heard someone say something like that once, and I think that that is the gist. I feel like I can um, provide a unique perspective on television because I haven't had cable for the past 10, 15 years or so, but now we got this thing called Sling, which is not a sponsor, though I totally welcome them with open arms. Basically, it's this a la carte service, this app that I downloaded on my Xbox, also not a sponsor. And with that, you could basically choose a couple channels uh, to have and to watch live so it's like I have television again after so much time without it It's like that movie Homeward Bound only I'm the dog and home is Television so last night I typed out a few observations after watching a couple hours of this television <laughs> And uh, here's what I came up with. This is two and a half hours of TV I believe it was the History Channel first up Geico commercial review a small gecko drives off in a teeny tiny golf cart uh, along a mini golf course this is a home run for me. If you want to sell stuff, and this is an important lesson, make it small. That's what Micro Machines did, and they won the 90s. Having a guy who talks fast is also helpful. And then I play this cute little game where I try to remind myself that they're selling insurance. So they're kind of banking on you, getting hurt or killed, and then I stop liking it. Next up was the television show American Pickers. Um, it's basically a show about a small team of people who has an antique shop, and they travel across the country to buy antiques that they're going to sell in their shop, right from the source. They buy things from people who are no less than 500 years old. <laughs> Exclusively 500 year old people selling them what they would refer to as rusty gold. And I wrote down here that American Pickers is great because when they're done buying from the old, old people, uh, there's always this shot of them leaving and the camera is behind the seller and they're waving and they're like, thank you so much for coming. Come back anytime, you're always welcome. But the cameraman in real life is still there. So then those old people, those old, they're, it's basically dust with a heartbeat. <laughs> they have to then in real life turn around and see that the camera crew is still on their property and be like, oh, hello. <laughs> All right, that's a cut everyone. All right. <clears throat> Next up is a show called Pawn Stars, which is kind of a similar concept. They're in a pawn shop, so obviously they're buying and selling stuff, weird stuff, in Las Vegas. The show is set in Las Vegas, I believe, and here's my review for that. Uh, pawn Stars, a show I like way less than American Pickers. On <laughs> uh, this particular episode, I saw an old man sell the Pawn Stars a giant magical medieval sword, and I couldn't c even concentrate on the haggling because I kept picturing the old man walking from his car to the pawn shop with the sword. You think anyone was taken off guard by that? Walking from the parking lot to... <laughs> <coughs> so then the little old guy is telling the pawn star all about the sword and its magical powers. Then they have to call some dude to come down and appraise it to figure out how the sword's magical powers are gonna affect the retail price. How do you even test for that? Like the appraiser guy <laughs> comes down and he's like, well, I took the sword outside 
and unfortunately I could not harness the power of a thousand suns. <laughs> Took the sword outside of the parking lot, turned zero people into newts. This particular sword, I don't know if I'm doing it wrong, but I wasn't able to turn a person into a newt with this particular scimitar. And then my least favorite part of the show happens. They turn back and they say something cute to the camera. Like the pawn star will walk away with the sword and be like, well I guess no newts is good newts. Huey Lewis and the Newts. And I don't like that part of it at all. Don't be cute, just buy old things. The buying the old things is the interesting part of the show. That's why I'm here. Lastly, there's a Volkswagen commercial out right now that makes me cry. We're in a family takes a trip across the United States of America with their immigrant grandmother to honor the memory of their dead grandfather. And you take that out of the oven and you let it sit on the windowsill for about 10 minutes and that's a recipe for tears. The following is a quote written by a man named Josh W24 on a blog I found on Google called Commercial Society where they review commercials, instantly became my favorite website. Um, uh, Josh writes, the commercial starts with a letter from a dying grandfather to his family, instantly invested. We're about 0.5 seconds in. He and his wife hail from Ireland, and he wants the family to take a trip to see America, and that's exactly what they do. Accompanied by the pleasant sounds of Simon and Garfunkel's America, the family takes a cross-country trip in their atlas. The SUV is called the at an atlas. We see the country's breathtaking landscapes and the grandkids hear the story of how their grandparents met. Maybe 15 seconds in now and I'm choking up a little bit. Choking up a little bit here. The road trip culminates in the clan spreading his ashes at sunset along the rocky Pacific coastline. And tears forever. Tears forever. Someone wrote that to sell an SUV. Is that why people don't go to the movies anymore? Because you got hopped up commercials like that? That commercial, for me, was the equivalent to when your philosophy teacher goes, I used to smoke weed in the 60s, but I would never smoke what you kids are smoking now because it's crazy laboratory shit. That's, that's what kind of, that's a dank ass commercial. And that's what it's like to watch TV after 15 years of not watching TV. And I hope this was fun, because I'm going to do a lot more regardless. <laughs> Anything I left out, Zoe? Thanks so much for watching. I put up videos every two. Thank you so much for watching. I put up new videos every two days a week. Anything else? Love you. Um, keep checking MikeFalzone.com and my Twitter and Instagram for stand updates. I think uh, on the 1st, I'll be at the Sycamore Tavern in West Hollywood. And then on the 7th, I'll be at the World Famous Comedy Store in the Belly Room for the Shindig Show. Come on out and laugh with me or at me. Doesn't matter. All I hear is laughing.